And to give you a closer look at this hot button issue, joining us this morning to talk about the proposal, Liz Henderson from Atlanta Pitbull Parents and Amy Siantos from Pitbull Rescue Central. And some friends. Good morning, ladies. Pleasure to see you. Good morning. Good morning. You brought along some friends, and, and you brought them to illustrate a point. One of them is a pit bull. One of them is not. Amy, tell me, first of all, which one is not, and why is that important? Um, Lennox is actually a Connie Corso mix. Okay. He may have some pit bull in him. We don't we don't know that. But to the public, this dog is what a pit bull is, a large stocky dog with cropped ears. However, that's important because if you enact breed specific legislation, <laughs> you're going to get any dog that looks like him when he is not at all and that's not fair it's it's not fair at all right um tell me a little bit um liz about why breed specific legislation does not work i mean we see the stories in the news. Um, we don't hear a lot of when labs attack or when German shepherds attack, but we do hear about it when pit bulls attack. And being in the news business, I think it's because those attacks appear to be much more serious mm -hmm. and much more lethal. Right. Um, the reason we think that breed-specific legislation simply does not work is because it does not address the root causes of dog attacks and dog bites. Um, it does not address owner responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, there are actually three factors that have been found to contribute to dog attacks. Um, the, the dog's position in the home, is it a pet or is it a guard dog, a yard dog or dog for breeding? How is the dog maintained? Is it inside of a crate or is it inside the home or is it tethered inside of a yard? And fourth is the reproductive status of the dog. Has it been spayed or neutered? 97% uh, of dogs involved in dog attacks and dog bites have not, not been fixed. fixed. Right, okay. Um, we saw those, st those statistics, the numbers are staggering. Um, we're getting now to the meat, the crux of the matter the ownership, um, responsible owners. We did a segment here on Good Day Atlanta. We spent about four minutes talking about a program educating pit bull owners. Is that the big deal here? Is that where the push needs to be? Yes. Owners need to be held accountable for the actions of their animals. I mean, if your child goes out with your car and kills someone, you're responsible. And pets don't have their own accountability. We have to take action for them. It's up to us to make sure they're contained properly, that they behave properly, that they're chained, uh, that they're trained, not chained. Mm -hmm. And that we also need to make sure that the existing ordinances that are on the books are followed. The laws that are currently on the books would take care of all these issues, but they're not enforced. Yeah. How do you enforce those issues? Well, those, you have to have laws. your you have to have your animal control come out and be willing to issue citations. As an mm -hmm. example, my husband was attacked by a pit bull uh, last May. I had called animal control several times on this family. I called them a total of seven times. They did not come out until the dog broke its chain and bit my husband. Why? Why did it take that many times? And in the case of Miss Forsh, these people had been a problem before. Their dogs had bitten someone before. Why does it take a serious injury to make something happen? That should never happen. All right. Um, there have been military installations that have come up with uh, breed-specific legislation, if you will, on military mm -hmm. installations. So um, this issue is not just a, a city ordinance issue. Folks are scared of the breed because they don't have a lot of information about it. How do we get more information out about the pit bulls? Um, and about the, the good side of the breed, if you will. Right. Um, I created the group Atlanta Pitbull Parents so that um, pitbull owners in the Atlanta area have a common educational and social resource to learn about responsible ownership. Um, a lot of people join our group and, and they don't realize um, that they don't realize some of the policies or beliefs that um, experienced pit bull owners hold, such as that pit bulls, you know, maybe should not go to dog parks, um, that, you know, your pit bull should not be left unattended in a yard. Uh, even with the six-foot tall fence, I think six foot is too short. So our group exists really to educate other owners, but then also to go out into community events and spread the word. Um, we've been at several community events. In fact, we um, recently marched in the East Copper Parade with our pit bulls to show um, the neighborhood how friendly the dogs can be. Um, right. That's what we want to do is get out there, spread the word about responsible ownership, and let people see our dogs. Yeah, recently we saw a media report um, that said 47 of the 51 dogs seized in the uh, Michael Vick case had been rehabilitated. So the dogs do respond to the proper type yes. of guidance and training. Absolutely. Yeah. Ladies, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having us.